Hey, what's up everybody? This is Titan, Titans of CNC. Check it out, check it out. Cool part, right? Cool part. But it's actually not a part. This is actually a tool. It's a fixture to hold an aerospace part that I can't show you, but this is how we hold it in place to hit those tents and machine thin walled crazy parts. And in this video, we're gonna discuss just that, making crazy parts and how you actually hold them in place to machine them to spec. Boom. It's about to get crazy. It's about to go down. It's about to go down. Check it out, some fixturing right here. What is it? I'm gonna explain all that, but before we get started, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. We're bringing the education on CNC, CAD, and CAM, and uh, hit the like button. Put comments down below if you want me to speak on a certain subject, put the comments and you'll probably see it in a future video. All right, all right, we got the cooking show right here with the fixtures. But in all seriousness, this is what makes elite machinists. Everyone can like figure out speeds and feeds, right? Your tool rep can actually tell you how to run that tool and what tool to actually run. A lot of people can actually design in CAD and make cool stuff. But not everyone, not everyone is gonna go to an elite status when it comes to holding a complex part that you have to machine within tents to true positioning and then releasing the part and having it snap right into spec so you can give it to your customer and it passes all quality checks. All right, so today I'm just gonna talk to you guys just a little bit about fixture and give you a few different examples of things that we do here at Titans of CNC. And one of the focuses that I wanna have in this vlog is actually machining thin wall parts, right? You guys hear me talk about aerospace and I talk about aerospace a lot because we have a lot of experience and if you can do aerospace, that basically means you can do everything else, all right? So I wanna give you guys an example. So I had a part that we quoted and we won the bid. All the walls were about 40 to 50,000 thick and it was closed, like it was a big cup. And then you had different pieces coming out, kind of like Medusa. So it was almost like a cup with pieces coming out of it, all right? But how do you hold something so thin and then hit all the true positionings like in tents? Well, it's almost an impossible thing if you actually crush it in jaws, right? So as soon as I saw it, I started thinking, you know what, I need to actually come inside it and expand, kind of like the Mighty Bite expansion clamps, all right? But this is a much bigger piece. So we designed a special mandrel, okay? That's what this is, this is a mandrel. A lot of times when you see mandrels, you actually see a bolt here, where when you actually screw the bolt, it expands. But in this case, we couldn't do that. So we actually went to a company and had this specially made. So you basically expand it back here, boom, and then it expands over here. Well, how do you hold this perfect? If you got true positioning from the center to the outside to the back end and the pieces coming out, how do you ensure that it's perfect? Well, you have to have a crazy collet, right? So this is the collet that we actually used, okay? So you can see it, boom. See that guy right there? So one of the cool things about this collet is that it's perfectly parallel to the fixture. So when you're holding it, your contact surface is gonna be great. It's gonna actually cup the entire thing and have a lot of surface area, okay? When, when we're talking about rigidity and doing thin wall parts, we're always talking about contact area and holding as much as possible because if you have gaps, it'll actually push out, right? When you put pressure on it. So you wanna hold as much as possible. So this is the collar. So the surface area is amazing. So Royal Products out of New York makes these things right there. And this is an amazing collar. One of the things that a lot of people don't think about is like, we have collars like five C's, right? This is just an average five C collar. But think about this. This is solid back here, it's solid and then it's actually cut, and then actually when it pulls back, it actually closes on your part. But guess what happens? On the outside, when it closes, it's actually tapering in, so 
the contact surface area is not great. It's pinpointed to the top. That's where the most rigidity is, right? So then your bar, if you have a bar coming through, you gotta make sure that it's not wobbling at all and that it is perfectly centered, all right? So these are great, but when you get into tense and you get into perfection, there is an error in this collet, all right? So just wanna explain that. These collets, the quick grip collets from Royal, look at all of the surface area all throughout this collet. I mean, it's beautiful. And the way it crushes is straight down so it's perfectly parallel, right? So when you pop this guy in, it's perfectly parallel to the part that you're holding and it just comes in perfectly, making sure that the part coming out is perfect to the chuck, all right? So now let's talk chuck. So this is the royal chuck that we actually use for this application, all right? So. You might think like, oh, Tiny's just talking about chucks and trying to sell chucks. No, this is, this is an amazing chuck. Watch this guy. So this is the quick grip and this is why it's called the quick grip. So basically you just grab this, you pop it right in, align it, pull it back, boom, you got it. And then you simply drop it in and see this guy right here? It just aligns with this pin right here. And there's three pins going around. So you just come down, Come around, boom, and it's locked inside perfectly, all right? All right, so one of the things that we have to understand is that this collet chuck is actually in a lathe, okay? So it's flipped up at a 90, and then the part, the mandrel, is coming out to the side, all right? But for demonstration purposes, I'm just gonna show you how it works on the table, all right? So we place the mandrel, into the collet. We lock the collet down perfectly. During the design phase, we actually designed the mandrel to be oversized because we understood that the parts with the true positioning and the combination of all the tolerances made it so the machining of the mandrel had to be absolutely perfect to the collet and the entire setup, all right? So once the mandrel was inside the collet and it was locked down, we face the mandrel and then turn the outside to the perfect diameter. Just so you guys clearly understand, we have a part with a diameter that is absolutely finished. The outside of the part has been roughed within 20 to 50 thousandths on all surfaces, so we've allowed it to relax. The ID is finished perfectly, the part slides on, we engage, boom, it expands, locking the part in place. And because the mandrel is perfect to the chuck with intense, we go ahead and machine the part, making it absolutely perfect. So one of the critical things that we had to think about was that once we finished machining on the lathe and made sure everything was perfect, we had to take the exact same part and put it into the five axis machine. Now you gotta think to yourself, you got 40 to 50 thousandths walls, absolute positioning, everything has to be absolutely perfect. Now you put it into a different setup, okay? So what did we do? We duplicated the exact setup in the lathe by going to a different royal chuck that actually held the exact collet. So we simply mirrored the setup and then indicated the mandrel perfect to the chuck and to the table. All right, so that's how we actually created a custom mandrel and used it with the royal quick grip collet chuck. Now remember now, it's all about surface area. So we had to go in and actually fill up that part expand to actually machine it perfectly. So let me give you a few other examples of how we did the same thing without a mandrel, okay? So now you're getting the thought pattern, right? The precision and how to set it up, how to create crazy fixturing, right? So I just wanna like show you a couple other examples, okay? So check this bad boy out right here. So this is a fixture that we actually machined on the lathe and then we put some post-op holes 
so that the fixture could actually lock into an HRT 210 fourth axis. So just like the mandrel, the part slides onto the fixture. Everything is machined perfectly to the ID of the part. You have a great amount of surface area and contact from the mandrel to the ID of the part. And then you cap it and basically rotate and machine your part complete, all right? So now think about it, you're rotating. So during the setup, you have to be absolutely perfect. And because we're dealing with crazy tolerances during the setup, you need to actually put an indicator on this fixture and make sure that it is dialed and within tenths. So the cap goes on, a live center hits over here, it rotates and you finish machining it, okay? So that's one example. Here's another example for a different part. Same theory, part goes on, surface area, filling it up, has to be absolutely perfect. The part has to fit like a glove and then the fourth axis rotates and you machine the part complete. One more example, very similar part. Part goes on, surface area, you gotta indicate it perfectly, and then you machine the part complete. Okay, so that's enough of mandrels. You guys get the point because you guys are geniuses, right? You guys understand manufacturing. So I'm just trying to show you some examples because once you guys see it, you guys are gonna bank it and then you can use it in your own application. Now, what if we have actually like thin rings that aren't real long and we need to actually machine these in a way that they're absolutely perfect. So the, the OD, the ID, basically everything, the, the roundness, everything is absolutely perfect. That's when we actually use pie jaws, right? So we, we call them pie jaws because they actually are like triangles that come together and then they're separated just barely. So the basic thing with pie jaws is that they're good for holding thin walled parts or parts that have a lot of center being hogged out, right? Because if you have regular jaws, just a three jaw, right? And they're skinny, they'll actually put pressure here, pressure here, pressure here. And then over here, they'll actually bow it outwards and deform your part, okay? So when we have those types of parts, we go to a pie jaw and we machine the diameter of the part in the pie jaw put the part into the pie jaw and basically clamp it. And because there's no big gaps, you can release it and the part will still be perfectly round. You know, Tyson's hitting his, his aerospace ink and in the other machine. So we got some other pie jaws, right? So these guys are actually steel and we got them from Shunk Work Holding and they're beats, right? But when you're machining ink and and you're machining the center of it and it has to be true to position within tents, you gotta have a rigid setup. It's gotta be perfect, right? So we go to these jaws right here. All right, so I don't want the video to go too long. I could talk for days on this stuff. But I just wanted to give you guys a look at advanced fixturing and how and why we actually create these tools, right? And in the future, just like the art of fixturing for the mills, we're gonna do an art of fixturing for the lays, and we're gonna teach you everything that you need to know to create fixtures just like this so you can take your skills to the highest level so you can get paid, so your company can get paid and you can take care of your families. Boom.